All right, we are live for another episode of Real Estate Junkies podcast. In this podcast, we are highlighting success stories with real estate agents, brokers, business owners who are making big impact in the industry. Today, we have with us an uh, amazing individual. I know him for quite some time now, Al Abdullah, with almost 27 years of unparalleled experience as a top producing realtor here in Michigan. Al isn't your typical real estate expert. Before diving deep into the property game, he drummed up a storm as an international professional drummer for you know a staggering 25 years. And just when you thought he might follow the usual real estate rhythms, he took the bold step of joining EXP, opening an office just three and a half years ago into the journey. Al's mantra is everyone goes left and L goes right. In a world of naysayers and skeptics, L stands firm on a resounding I will and I should. Channeling the spirit of Nike in real estate, he doesn't just do it, he does it with style. With L, it's not about building just the team. He has crafted an army of real estate agents behind him. It's a collective effort he says, where we takes precedence over me. Al, it's a pleasure finally having you on the podcast. Thank you for being here, brother. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. Thanks for the invite. I'm honored and uh, looking forward to it. So, you know, I have some, you know, I, I, I learned about your story, I think about three or four years back at the Z Boot Camp, and you shared your story of how you were the drummer, you know, back in the day and, you know, your whole story, you know, as a, as a professional drummer, what lessons do you bring, you know, to the world of real estate or, or through your real estate journey, becoming real estate, share that with us a little bit. Uh, yeah. So I, I started as a musician, uh, just playing the, you know, the Middle Eastern uh, drum from home and then joined band in school and, and uh, at third grade and uh, just always had a passion and love for music. And then uh, at uh, eight years old, I went on stage uh, at a wedding by accident because the drummer was not feeling good. And I went on stage and played and that was like exciting to me at eight years old. Cause I was always, used to always stand by the, the musicians and the drummer, I'm sorry, the musicians in the band at the weddings and have dinner with them. So I was like a little musician with the older musicians. And uh, at uh, 13, I uh, was able to join a band and everybody else was like 25 and 35 and whatever else. And uh, and it just took off. I was doing local weddings. Uh, I was doing local weddings. And then I got out of high school. My dream was to play for a superstar singer named Walid Tofik, who was world renowned singer internationally all over the world. Uh, he was like the Arabic Michael Jackson. And I used to go to his concerts as a kid and all of a sudden, I got a phone call to play for him in Windsor, Ontario, in Windsor, Canada. And from that concert, it went to another concert, to another party. And then all of a sudden I was traveling around the Canada. And then they took me around the U.S. That was a two month tour. Then they asked me to go to Lebanon and travel around the world. Wow. And I did that for five years straight. It's crazy. That's amazing. And, and how did you fall into real estate from that? Uh, my brother, my brother was, uh, a, he, my brother got into real estate in 1989. Sorry. I'm just trying to get people like follow us on this Facebook thing and I don't know how to do it and I don't know how to tag, but oh, here we go. yeah, you should get a notification from me yeah, where I tagged you. You just approve it. And I think uh, we should be good. Or you can just share from profile? the page. Add to profile. Is that what I do? Okay. Share yeah. it. Here, I'll just yeah. share it. Now. There we go. How's that? There you go. Like okay. perfect. Okay. Now you guys can see us. God, you tech savvy people are so annoying. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so, so yeah, so uh, my brother, my brother Dave was uh, uh, University of Michigan finance marketing, you know, degree and got into real estate. And in 1989, he became a realtor. And since he got in, I always knew, you know, because in, in school, I was always drawing houses and drawing cars. So I'm a car guy and I'm a house guy. So it just made perfect sense. I mean, I always drew houses and I was good at it. Instead of like paying attention to school, I was drawing houses. And then all of a sudden, you know, I was like, hey, my brother successful in it and he was very successful uh why not join that wagon and hop on you know great mentor and coach can't beat that yeah so so i'm sure you found passion in drumming right yeah traveling around the world so it's like i i always try to understand this in people because 
there are some people they're like, ah, I'm not so much about money. I like, I want to love what you, what I do. Right. Like how, how did you make that shift? Like, you know, what was it for you that, you know, what real estate is the thing that I'm going to dedicate myself to. And I'm not so much about like, what was it for you? Uh, I, I was never a school guy. Okay. <laughs> I hope my kids are not watching. I never, <laughs> I Your son probably is. <laughs> I have, I have a 22 year old son in college, a software engineer degree, a 16 year old daughter, and a, and a, and a oops, baby, wow. two, year old, a two and a half year old son. So that was like a built in grandchild. But anyway, <laughs> uh, I just, uh, I, the music world was very exciting to me, interesting. It was a passion, it was a, it was a hobby. I've always loved music because it's, it's, it's just something I really loved, you know? And I played the uh, rock, funk, jazz, marching band in school, and then and then got into real estate. Uh, and it, to me, it was just like, it made perfect sense. And I was already traveling a lot here in the state of Michigan for different gigs and parties. And then that helped me in real estate because now I know more areas, townships and counties. Uh, so I don't know, did I answer your question right? And like, what was it? Like, why did you go from, you know, I'm sure you found passion in music, right? Was why it the money? The was it like, what was the shift for you? I just I, I knew that when my, when my parents let me at you know 17 years old travel with superstar singers and one superstar singer led me to the other the rest of the superstar singers, when my parents let me travel with them, uh, it was on like one condition that that's not my job my lifetime commitment because they knew wow. that traveling around the world you're dealing with different people parties this that and it might just not be not a, end a, up a, in the right place you know yeah. not everyone does, yeah. Correct. So for me, it was just, it made perfect sense to get into real estate because that's a career. That's a, you know, the music world was a hobby and a lot of fun traveling, you know, this country, that state, this thing, that thing, especially at 17 and 18 and 19 years old, shit, traveling <laughs> around the world and getting paid, flying first class. <laughs> Who won? The life. Right? That's a life. Yeah. Like, you know, and so I knew real estate was a career and I knew that I can do well with it. I'm a street, you know, behind the suit, like, I don't, I don't wear a tie anymore. I used to wear a tie vest and Hank and all that, you know. I guess as you get older, you just don't care for it anymore. But I always tell people, behind the suit and tie is a street guy. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, it just made perfect sense. The street smart. My So my brother Dave was book smart. He was like a 4.0 in U of M. I was street smart. I we can tell. Honestly, we can tell the difference. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Now you have said, you know, everyone goes left and L goes right, right? Yeah. Can you share like a pivotal moment in your real estate career where this mantra guided a significant decision that you have made? Since I was a kid, I was always the different one. Like I had to have the best bike. If everybody had that BMX, I had BMX plus, plus, plus. <laughs> you know what I'm it just, I was always, I never liked to do what everybody did. And you know, I had the first convertible when I turned 16, you know, I had, I was always, I want to be the first. I never want to be like the second, third. And I always want to be the trendsetter, not the follower. I don't know. It's not like my dad does. Maybe my dad was like that a little bit, you know, you know, be different. You know, it's not like an ego thing. Like, oh, I'm going to do it this way and to hell with them. No, it just, I love to, I love to do something that was exciting and different and let people follow and duplicate it. Yeah, yeah. Not compete with me, duplicate it. You know what? Compete with me, duplicate it, whatever you want to do. So that's when I say, like, everybody goes left, I go right. I don't follow the herd because mm -hmm. the majority follow the herd in life, usually, right? Yeah. For yeah. me, it's I want the herd to follow me. Yeah. Because do you not, want to create your own herd? <laughs> yeah, but not that my way is better or the high, you know, my way or the highway or like you don't know what I'm, you know, you're doing. I only, and I only know what I'm doing. No, no. It was nothing like that. It just, I always found ways to do things differently so that people can do things differently. Yeah. yeah. You know, sometimes you don't know what you don't know mm -hmm. until you see somebody else do it. Yeah. I relate to that a lot, actually. Um, you know, joining EXP, I believe, you know, you were one of the first agents in the Arabic community, in the Muslim community, for sure, mm -hmm. right? Like, and, and opening an office, you know, joining EXP, it's definitely a bold move, right? Especially in the Dearborn community, we know how tight-knit that real estate market is, right? Like, the, right. the, the, the community, real estate community is in Dearborn. Mm -hmm. You know, what motivated you with this decision, and how, how did it shape 
the tra trajectory of real estate for you, for people around you, for Dearborn? Never in a million years did I ever think, you know, I would be joining another brokerage. Never in a million years did I even think I'd open up an office. You know, just think about opening up an office. <laughs> All the brokers out there, they know what's involved. You know what I'm saying? People think like opening up an office is so cool. Yeah, It is, but it's also a lot involved. You know, a lot of responsibility, liability, and emotions, psychology, helping, everything, mentoring, coaching, etc. cetera. Uh, so for me, it's just like 22 years, you know, I was in a business, you know, uh, originally at Century 21 and everything was going great. No issues. It just mm -hmm. something different came to my plate and it seemed exciting. It seemed different. And to me, it's like, you know, they, they say in EXP, once you see it, it's hard to unsee it. Mm -hmm. It was extremely difficult for me to unsee it. That was the problem. And the more and more I looked into it and dove into it, the more and more it seemed very interesting because, again, everybody goes left, I go right. <laughs> Al goes right. <laughs> so that was my right way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, R I G H E, or right, <laughs> however you want to look at it. It, just, it was exciting. That's what yeah. it was. Yeah. For sure. And and how has that, I know, I, I sit down with agents and, uh, uh, Dearborn, Dearborn community agents a lot and just have this conversation to have them see it too, right? Even in my uh, my community, in the Bengali community, there's like probably like over 300 agents here in Michigan alone. And, you know, I was one of the first ones to join, but then people don't see it, right? So like share that experience with us. Like, okay, there is, you know, this traditional way of doing real estate and then the way we are doing real estate, like how has that changed your business? How has that impacted it, impacted your financial decisions or everything that you are financially like? Like what have you experienced so far in EXP coming with EXP? I don't know, four or five years now, right? Uh, October 30 will be five years. Wow. Yeah. Uh, listen, uh, from the get go, you know, EXP was a different, like a new company, you know, to everybody, even to the Dearborn community. And, you know, it's scary when you're diving into a new company, a new brand that never, nobody's ever heard of EXP. Heck, when they brought it to my attention was, was a while back, somebody reached out to me, said, Hey, you know, I'm thinking of jumping ship and getting on this EXP bandwagon. And I was like, EXP, the only thing I know about EXP and I didn't even know about this brokerage is I used to call a lot of expireds. So we used to call them EXP on our, so like, to me, that was like, I thought it was an expired. I'm like, what is this? Like an expired listing? <laughs> you know what? And you know what? The interesting thing is that realtor that reached out to me a while back, right? Way before I joined, uh, never like got back to me, like to explain what is EXP? Like he shut up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and I just left it at that. So when Mark Z reached out to me at the time, you know, about, EXP and Michelle Sayward and Kurt Shewell, you know, it was like interesting. And uh, so far it's, um, it's done very well for me. Uh, actually, I, my initial plan was a test run. Let's just, let me dive into this. I went to the convention in New Orleans and I was just trying to make sure this company is for real, how big this company is, because it was very, it was unknown here. Nobody knew it. I didn't even know it. If the guy that is going to move to it doesn't even know it, how's everybody else going to know, right? And I went to the convention. I found like 7,000 people there. I'm like, wow, okay, this is interesting. And when I joined, uh, my initial thought process was this is a test run. Mm. You know, when I, I'm not like, I can't get out of this relationship with them. I'm not locked in. They can't, they have to really, it was a test run where I can get out anytime I want. So I got in as a test run to see if this is legit and real. And if I didn't like it, I was just going to go back. Yeah. It's that simple. But I started from scratch. I literally started my business from zero, like a brand new agent. So I was so busy. I, I was a master of prospecting expires and for sale by owners. I was grinding the phones from morning till night, going on appointments left and right, like 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. I was on those phones. And then 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. I was on appointments. And then I'd come back home, eat dinner, shower, and then back into my home office processing files. I was a one man show when before I was on a team. Yeah. So my there's a lot of eyes on me. I was like a lot of the community and a lot of people, 
you know, or very curious to see what would happen. And I crushed it and I killed yeah. it. And everybody's like, the same people that said you shouldn't have left said, whoa, <laughs> what are you doing, bro? That's, you're killing it. Well, yeah, because I had a lot of pressure on me. And when I had a lot, when I'm cornered like that, you guys are all cousins. Like I found out, like you guys are all related to each other. All the real yeah, estate yeah. agents and brokers in Dearborn. <laughs> Dearborn, Dearborn Heights, <laughs> all related somehow. <laughs> that is that is hilarious. That is hilarious. Yeah. Now the, the the phrase "I will" and "I should" right goes against you know the, in the world of skeptics today, right? Like you know everyone's just like looking for excuse to not take action, right? So what challenges have you faced, you know, by adapting this mindset? You know, I'm sure not, if not your team, but also people around you, right? They, they look down on you for like someone who is just trying to do better than everyone else, better than yourself, right? How have you overcome that, you know, skepticism around you? So, you know, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that, you know, most, um, most brokerages or realtors or people in many of the, in these industries, it, it, it's all about me, not about you and what I could do. Sorry, I just want to stand up because I hate sitting. Okay, here we go. So, you know, a, a, a lot of people, it, 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 they're self-centered. It's all about them, not about, you know, it's all about themselves, all about me. So I, I've got this image that, you know, it's all about we, all about us not all about me, you know, you know, me is we, you know, when you put yeah. that W, when you flip the M to a W, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's, it's becomes not a team. It becomes an army. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And it's gotta be a good sergeant, a good leader uh, to lead your troops in the right direction. I mean, you don't want to go to war without all your weapons hmm. and you don't want to go to war with your sar your, your uh, soldiers, not trained, mentored, coached, and, you know, we're going to go like this and here's the plan of action. Here's the plan of attack. Right. So for me, like I'm not the difference between me and everybody else in the industry is I'm not their broker. I'm not their boss. And I tell this to everybody. I'm just another realtor like they are. And I think that that relationship, they can relate to it better because there's no financial drive that I have uh, that maybe other brokers do. Like I'm not attached to anybody staying or leaving. Like I'm not collecting their caps or all this other stuff, you know, I do get a piece of their pie, but it's a piece of their pie, but if yeah. you, you can get a lot of pieces of many pies, mm -hmm. it's a big pie. Yeah. But be service driven. Don't be fine. Don't be profit driven. And I, yeah. a lot of realtors and in the industry leaders well, and brokers, yeah. yes, just the sales industry in different industries is very profit centered. You know, money, money, money. And, and a lot of people might think, well, I did it because of the money. Well, no, it's not just the money. It's the not only the financial freedom or the retirement plan that we have or the residual income that we have. But but I think the fact that we have no like people on our head, you know, constantly. Why this? Why that? Why this? Why that? Like the pressure of the ownership yeah. and the franchises and all that, that, you know, a lot of commitments. So for me, it was. It was it was a it was a great decision to go that direction. Yeah. And here it's been almost five years and, and it's it's done a lot for my family. It's done a lot for my agents' families, it's done a lot for them, it's done a lot for us, it's done mm -hmm. a lot for the company. Mm -hmm. It's it, it, it's some you know multiple levels of revenue for people above me that brought the person that brought me. So everybody yeah. wins. That's yeah. the bottom yeah. line. Yeah. Yeah. Is at other brokerages, the winner is the person that owns a brokerage. The management and the franchisees or franchise yeah. the franchise franchise owners even franchise. though like if you really look at it franchise owners are not making any money like the best one is probably making like two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year after after all the cost and everything right like they, they're not really making so much money right it's not like oh they're becoming millionaires by owning franchises like especially with high cost of running everything they're not making so much money say, i know franchise they're... owners who are making hundred thousand dollars a year say even if they're making money or making a million or making two million good for them you yeah. know i mean when they say that you know they're not recruiting. They're not a recruiting company. Every brokerage is a recruiting company. We all know it. You know, they're bringing the management, the, this person, the, that person. They bring that person. That 
it's an upline side. It's like all everybody. recruiting, yeah. Everybody's recruiting. If they're not recruiting, then how are they getting the realtors and how are they getting the revenue? Mm, I don't know yeah. if I answer. Listen, man, when you ask me a question, my mind can go in a different direction. So you gotta watch. <laughs> I know. You gotta, I could you tell. Keep on track, okay? <laughs> so, so look, from drummer to realtor and then from a traditional realtor to now EXP, right? Yeah. Like it looks like your story is like you are continuing to reinvent right? Like reinvent yourself, right? Like what has been the biggest surprise or learning curve through like doing this reinventions? Like what, what would you say about like people who are stuck, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you could have been stuck being a drummer, right? Because you were, you thought like, oh, I had passion in it. You could have fought, fight your parents to be like, you know what, this is all I want to do. But you reinvented yourself with being a realtor. And then you reinvented yourself coming to EXP, now running an army, like what what lesson can you share with us or people with people that feel stuck in life? Uh, so another thing is we did own a restaurant for about 30 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. So like I was in a restaurant, I was drumming. So my day was like re school, restaurant, drumming, Friday, Saturday, Sundays, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sundays, and then real estate six days. Yeah, I was doing so much like I was like a machine. <laughs> but then when I got out of the restaurant business with my family, my parents in Southfield, Michigan, I got into the real estate. So I was doing real estate six days a week and I was doing drumming three days a week. Like I had no life, no time. I was making money, but who cares? Like it's no life, you know? So if somebody, repeat that question, kill me. So like, you know, through these like reinventions, what lesson can you share with people that are maybe feeling stuck? Like, you know, how can, how do you continue to go for these change, right? That you have been through in your story. Got it. Okay. So first of all, Horses have blinders to keep them on in lane. You got to put blinders. You just got to yeah. really focus on what is it that you want to do in life. Yeah. Is it the money you want to make or is it the happiness? Yeah. You know, are you trying to be happy or are you trying to be filthy rich? Because filthy rich doesn't make you always happy. Money buys happiness, but sometimes money makes problems. Mm -hmm. So you have to decide which direction you want to go in life. Yeah. Are you looking to make, you know, 50,000 a year, 100,000 a year, a million a year, a billion a year, whatever, you know, you got to ask yourself, what is it that excites me? Is it servicing families and clients in real estate or is it the commission checks? Mm -hmm. Because if you're only focusing on the commission checks, you're not going to last in the business. It's a service driven industry. Yeah. It's a profit driven industry. Yeah. Yeah. My brother taught me that years ago as far as being service driven, not profit driven. Mm -hmm. Most people are profit driven. Yeah. Yeah. When you're service driven and you're taking care of your clients from the heart and you're getting what they're needing and wanting. Yeah. That's what the business is all about. So if you're mm -hmm. stuck in a situation where you just don't know which direction you want to go, like my son, he's got his real estate license and he's got he's going to software engineering school and all that. Real estate is just not, he doesn't care for it, doesn't like it. So it's not for everybody. The problem is people get into this, this industry yeah, because of the money and because of the freedom and because of the, the, the flexible hours. Yeah, yeah. Those are the ones that fail the most. Yeah. That's why 85% fail after two years. Because they get in 40-hour class, they get the real estate license, they wear a suit and tie and they think they're, they're you know, the, the shit now. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a real estate professional, you know? Yes, but you know, and I know in this business, there's a lot more involved than just making a commission check. Yeah, yeah. All the behind the scenes stuff that we deal with that the general public doesn't see, that when we go home, our mind is spinning 100 miles per hour and we're sleeping on our pillow. We're like, that transaction. <laughs> back, no. Did I admit something? Did I something? <laughs> oh, shit, I forgot to call Sayyid, you know? <laughs> no, they, it's they, amazing. They, so they, what I hear you say is that what were you saying? Did I answer your question right? Yeah, 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 for sure. What I hear you say is that you fix your end goal and that will help you go through all the reinventions you need to get go yep. through to get to that end goal. Like, don't just like be short-sighted, right? Don't just like, oh, I want to make $100,000 a year, which is basically like 90% 90, 90 of the industry, right? I want to get to the 100000 or whatever their you know environment is setting as a standard, like if you could just get to that, you're going to be happy in life. And then you you basically keep yourself stuck because you're trying to just get to that hundred thousand dollars. There is no reinventions. There is no change that would come in your way because your goal is just not high enough.
Mm-hmm. Now, you know, you described your approach as channeling the spirit of Nike in real estate, right? Like doing it with style, right? Can you share like a story or maybe a deal that, you know, where this philosophy really played a role? Yeah, um, because most people that I talk to, yeah, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try prospect. I'm going to try working on. I'm going to try, 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 try. And I keep telling them trying is lying. <laughs> like, what do you mean? I'm like, I work for Nike real estate. I just do it. <laughs> you got to do it. It, 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 it. Stop this. Like, I decided I'm going to join EXP. And I decided I'm going to go all out. But I'm not doing it. Mm-hmm. You have to have the mindset that if you're going to do become a lawyer, become a pharmacist, become whatever you're going to become, real estate agent or car salesman, who cares? Okay. You got to have the mindset that, hey, I'm going all out and all in, and I'm not going to let, let, let the negative Nellies and naysayers and people say you can't do it. Actually, shit, you know how many people, you know how many people uh, uh, told me I made the biggest mistake? Lots, right? Yeah. And, and fortunately, fortunately, you know, I started in the industry uh, having, like, so what I have provided to these guys in my group, in my army, mm. I was blessed to have that when I started in the business because my brother, my brother is, you know, a top leader in the industry, a mentor, a coach, uh, uh, top sales person in the, in the state of Michigan, in the country, in the world. Imagine getting into the business and having that as your leader, as your mentor, right? Mm-hmm. That's something that, that was the fire that kicked me mm-hmm. and made me want to do this. And I was blessed to have that because most people get into their business and say, don't have leaders like me, like you, like this person, like my brother, Dave, et cetera, et cetera. And, and unfortunately they fall flat on their face because they have nobody guiding them. So yeah. if you have, if you have a um, direction you want to go, go. But extremely important is surround yourself by people that are bigger and better than you yeah. from the beginning. So if you're like the type that needs uh, uh, support, join a team that's already thriving and growing so that they can hold your hand and, and hold you accountable and, and boost you and push you. Yeah. Don't just say, well... You know, I, I hear the famous line. I know a lot of people. I'm a great, I'm a great talker. No, <laughs> you got to be a great listener. I'm good at communication. People say that. I hear yeah. that a lot. Now, look, building an army is in real estate is no small feat, right? Like you, you, you know, there's a lot that goes into it, right? Like, how do you foster a culture where we takes precedence over me in your, in your, in your team, in your environment? especially in an industry that's known for, you know, as you mentioned, you know, uh, fierce competition, you know, everyone's just looking out for themselves. Everyone's just looking out after their own profit, right? Whether it's their own broker, you know, brokers out there telling agents that, oh, we love you, we support you. But at the end of the day, it's all about the bottom line, right? I've been through my experience of that, right? So like, how do you foster that culture within, within your environment? I'm a big believer in keep giving, you'll keep getting. Don't just focus on getting information from leaders and mentors and whoever. Give. Learn how to give. You know, give knowledge. Give support like this right now. I'm not being paid to do this. Heck, me and you barely know each other. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, we're not hanging out every weekend. You know, right? We know each other through the we EXP should. <laughs> yeah, so we know each other through the EXP model, but it's not like we're best friends, right? Yeah. And but you asked me, and I said, yeah, sure. Yeah. I'll give my thoughts, my mindset, my knowledge, mm-hmm. and I'll give my agents my uh, what do they call it? My knowledge, and I'll give you know this person and that person. Actually, if anything, I'm the one that kept on pushing my real estate board, the Dearborn board, to hey guys. Let's do a board meeting uh, and put a panel of realtors from all the brokerages and let's share our secret sauce because I'm a big believer at EXP. Our sauce is not yeah. secret. We share yeah. it. It's not secret sauce. It's sauce that's not secret. So why not get on a panel at the Durban board meeting and share all of our knowledge? That's what realtors want to hear. When mm-hmm. I open up a class on Thursday at 12 o'clock, every Thursday I do a meeting a class at 12 o'clock for all real estate brokerages to come. I don't care what company you're from. 
I'm not doing this to recruit anybody. Just come in yeah. and learn whatever we're learning. Because here's the thing, Sayed. Here's the part that I don't get about our business and I hate. We all sell each other's properties from all the brokerages, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But yet, we don't want to share our knowledge. Like, why not collaborate, share each other's knowledge? And who cares what you learned that I've been doing that's been growing me? Yeah. At the end of the yeah. day, I keep giving. Yeah. It's probably and more than likely the reason why I keep getting. Yeah. That's yeah. my answer. For sure. And and I think people miss this crucial like uh, detail, which is like even if you shared your secrets with people, you could never give someone hard work. Like, you know, uh, we, we know you're really good at prospecting and you're teaching that to agents that are around you and everyone, right? End of the day, those agents have to go do those prospecting themselves. You can't do that. So even if you share the secret, it's not like they're going to go, oh, the next day they, they hit the same number of appointments you would without doing the work, right? They still have to do the work. And and that's my philosophy. And I actually found out over the last three years of experience of sharing everything that I know is that agents don't do the work, <laughs> right? I <do> so you <laughs> Yeah. You know, so it, it's irrelevant if you shared it, you held it back or not. But what I found is that giving is always, uh, there is a quote that I have, is uh, unconditional service or unconditional giving brings unlimited profit, right? In business, that's a philosophy I run by, and I, I truly believe in that. So now, 27 years of experience, right? What's one piece of advice that you would give to a new real estate agent? We know that over the last three, four years, there has been like a tidal wave, right, of agents coming into the industry, especially if they, you know, feel like they're, you know, marching into this, like with the shifting market and everything. Like what advice would you give new real estate agents? First of all, uh, just to go backtrack on something you mentioned, you know how many times I've told realtors in my group, in your group, in this guy's group, in the whole industry and of all, our, all of our brokerages, this is what I do. This is how I do it. And they don't do it. <laughs> you know why they don't do it? Because there's a saying, you can lead a horse to the water, but you can't make them drink. I've even tried to make them drink and they won't drink. There's a small percentage of realtors mm-hmm. doing the majority of the business. Mm-hmm. And those are the ones that are willing to do what others don't do. If you do what others won't do, you'll have what others don't have. Don't have, yeah. Okay, yeah. so yeah. so that's that that part right there. I just want to get that out of my yeah. Uh, <laughs> for, sure. for a new agent, for a new agent, listen. I've been in business for that long. I've seen the foreclosure market, the short sale market, the good market, the hot market, the cold market. This market, low inventory, high demand. Well, the demand kind of died and dropped a little bit because of interest rates. They can't afford everything they they could have afforded. If you're going to get into the business thinking you're going to crush it, you're going to get crushed. (laughs) It's good to have that mentality, that mindset. But go to an office, go to a realtor, go to a team that is crushing it. Yeah. So you can crush it with them. If you think you're going to make it on your own, today's industry is different than before when I started. Like, it seems like everybody and their mother is a realtor. Every family has five realtors. Every cousin have nine cousins. Every, it's like, especially in the Dearborn community, I think there's like seven, 800 realtors. Like, if I was a buyer or seller in, in Dearborn, Dearborn, I'm just talking about Dearborn, not the yeah. world, okay? Yeah. Who do I work with? I know Al, I know Saeed, I know Mo, I know John, I know this guy, you know? So figure out who you're going to be Who's going to give you the most knowledge and support as a team leader and join them? Don't yeah. try to do it on your own. Mm. I promise you it's not going to work. As veterans in the business, we struggle in this market. I know so many top great leaders and mentors and coaches and superstar producers that are struggling in this market. Yeah, yeah. Imagine being brand new. Uh, how do I show a house? How do I write up a contract? So make sure you join a brokerage or the VXP or whoever that is going to be by your side. Yeah. Support you. And and if you're working a full-time job, a big advice I always tell every person that meets with me, if you're working a full-time job and you have bills to pay, don't leave your full-time job until your part-time real estate job is making you as much as your full-time or more. 
I find a lot of people get out of the full-time job, get into the real estate game, don't make money for six months to a year. And their bills are piling up and they're like, oh, I thought I was going to make this 3%, 6%, 3%, 6%. Yeah. And they're finding out that all their family and friends are not working with them because they're new. And then they're like stressed and then they depressed and then they get out of the business and say, this is not for me and it doesn't work. No, the business works. You don't work. If mm. Everything works if you work. It doesn't work if you don't work. So yeah. new agents, surround you, who you surround yourself with, new agents, matters. Yeah. The, what I heard you say is, First of all, set the right expectation. It's not going to be easy, right? You will go through challenges. You will have to work hard, right? That, that in itself, I think, is the 85% mark of agents why they fail. And then surround yourself with the right people who would support you. Like, you know, I just had an agent join me from Boston uh, in my uh, organization. And he was telling me stuff like, you know, he's from one of the franchise brokerages where since the market shift, they're not supporting people like they used to, right? Most likely, probably a bottom line brokerage, like their bottom line is not making sense. So they're like pulling back on support. And it's like, they're not even backing me up on transactions that I'm having a hard time with, right? So you have to, I think this is a crucial point when it comes to uh, being successful as a real new real estate agent. Now, if you got experience, even then, like I'm talking to uh, agents who've been in business for 12 to 14 years, longer than I have, and they have basic real estate problem because nobody ever taught them how to set up foundations to their real estate businesses and then treat this as a business. So what I hear you say is that surrounding yourself with the right environment that will support you, teach you, help you stand out. Like Dearborn market is a very challenging market to get into for anyone, right? Because there's already like almost everyone a realtor, right? I think it's way more than the number is way more than hundred realtors, it's probably around 500. <laughs> probably 800. <laughs> 800, you're right. But, so, but again, you know, yeah. Yeah. So given this mantra of taking the path of less traveled, like what we talked about, what we started off with, right? Where do you see the future of real estate heading? You know, how, you know, technology and everything coming into play. And 27 years, you have seen all different, all these changes that have happened in the industry. Where do you, what, what changes do you see coming up? And where, where are we going with the industry? What I do like about this market, it's going to weed out a lot of the realtors that are not working. The people that are not doing what you're supposed to do. Hmm. I mean, who loves to prospect, door knock, lead, generate, call, follow up? Most realtors today, not like during my time, when we started, don't yeah. want to do it. Okay. So if they're not calling, they're not prospecting, they're not this. I see the industry weeding out a lot of realtors. I heard 60,000 realtors got out of the business this year. Great. I'm happy. Why? So that this business can go back to a quality uh, skill. Service yeah, yeah. Like a quality uh service agent that knows their market knows their numbers and knows how to uh what are they called uh, knows how to work the market yeah. different than somebody brand new or different than somebody's been in it part-time or somebody that's just not not doing what they're supposed to be doing mm -hmm. I, I like the fact that this business and the market the way it's going i see the market the real estate business going back to the way it was years ago where there's this many people in the business mm -hmm. not this Unfortunately, every time the market picks up, everybody becomes a realtor because the easiest thing to do is go get your license. But for people that got sales background, they'll do very good in the business. Yeah. Teachers yeah. that became realtors will do very good because they're used to teaching. So mm -hmm. teaching them is Damn, easy. Damn, bad themselves, huh? <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> teachers do well. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I've got some realtors in my group that, you know, failed their exam many, many times. Are are my our top producers? You know our top producers uh in in our industry hold yeah. on one sec i'm hearing background from my behind me somebody's listening to me live and i'm like hearing my stuff hold on one yeah. sec all right um so anyway i have yeah. to tell them, turn off speakers i'm hearing myself like it's hard so, so where do you see the industry all together aside from the market where where are we heading with all the technology uh uh in you know, new things that are coming up, you know, the buyer agency thing that's happening. Uh, what's coming up for us, you feel like? I truly believe that the rates will eventually come down a little bit, okay, which will increase the flood of new buyers, right? It'll get buyers there. 
there's a lot of there's a lot of sellers a lot of sellers on on like they're like i always say be on the playing field don't be in the fan in the stand and watching there's a lot of sellers and buyers in the stands right now they're on the mm-hmm. playing field yeah, they're in the yeah. stands right now they're waiting to see what happens with rates they're waiting to see what happens with the market they're kind of scared to sell because they can't find what they're looking for mark my words and i said it during the time we were shut down during the pandemic i told them buy now sell now because when the floodgates open everything is going to go haywire and what mm-hmm. i mean by that the minute the rates go down a little bit or a lot of it all the buyers that are sitting on the sideline in the stands are going to jump on the field all the sellers that are sitting in the stands are going to jump on the field and guess what's mm-hmm. going to happen yeah there ain't no crash in sight the only crash mm-hmm. only pre- people that think a crash is going to happen are people that are in their head because you're in your head yeah. <laughs> so it's going to be let me tell you something probably after after the winter coming up yeah if the rates go down mm. it's gonna be a chaos it's gonna be chaos yeah. out there yeah and you think the prices are expensive now and you're trying to wait until it goes down it's gonna go up i promise you yeah you yeah the rates are high now buy now get a higher rate refinance later yeah but if you wait you're going to be that's like, 40 fifty thousand dollars over asking price easily to be able to get into a house uh, you know th- that's when you will truly be on the sideline not because you choose to you're going to be on the sideline by force because you, you can't you can afford to pay 40 fifty thousand dollars you can't afford to give hundred thousand dollars appraisal guarantee gaps right and I, I, that's actually pretty much my prediction is by next april a lot of agents are going to go out of business because they're not doing what they're supposed to. They're not, you know, separating uh, themselves from the rest. They're not branding. They're not marketing. They're not putting words out there. They're not, you know, calling enough people. They're not having conversations. They will be out of business because the rates are going to, I feel like the rates are going to climb by December. It's going to actually go up to eight, maybe eight and a half. Who knows, right? Because we have to put off the inflation that we are going through. But then by next April, I feel like we might even go down to like six and a, you know, 5.5, six. By the end of next year, we probably will see four and a half, four, right? But in that time frame, from April to end of next year, it's going to be a crazy market. So uh, I'm, I'm glad we see uh, the same thing in the market. Now, finally, L, with such a dynamic career in real estate, right? And your philosophy, right? What's next for you on the horizon? What are, you, what are your plans in the future? Where will you be taking your you know, uh, music background and, you know, real estate next. So the music background, I retired about 10 years ago because it's just too much to handle. Okay. I don't do no more parties and gigs and concerts and all that. Uh, the real estate, uh, my main thing is making everybody busy, mentoring, mm-hmm. coaching them. You know, uh, I'm still on the production line. Uh, yeah. I'm not doing what I used to do, you know, prospect like crazy and all that. Since I opened up my office, I stopped that. I'm teaching that to others. I just want to keep growing my army yeah. and make them the best they can be and give them everything that I learned from my brother, from different real estate coaches that we we're a part of, uh, share that knowledge with them and let them grow and grow and grow. And at the end of the day, you know, I'm like the old man in the office now, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, and these guys look up to me and, you know, I, I look at them like, you know, my kids, you know, and some of yeah. them that are yeah. just as old as my kids, you know, these days, the younger generation, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, are getting in the business. We've never seen that when I got in. I got in, I was like 22 or 25, I think. I don't know what I was. But anyways, so the lot of young generation getting in the business. And the guys that had the gray, they're like, oh, he's old. <laughs> I want to deal with Sayed. He's young, you know. And so I would say the, the business in general, uh, I myself, I see myself in it for a long haul. I just, you know, do I want to be running around like crazy like I did for all those years? No. Uh, do I want to see my my group, my army grow? Yes. Uh, and if they grow more and they do more, uh, they, they're happy. I'm happy. Everybody's – it's a win-win. I mean, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you know, that's what it comes down to. So I just want to keep helping uh, others. Whether it be yeah. in our company or not, I don't care. You know, if, if right yeah. now I've done I've done a class at different brokerages. You know, I've done a class at different brokerages, uh, and I'm not. They're not even with me. Mm-hmm. If anybody yeah. invited me to speak at their brokerage, I would be more than happy to speak. Yeah, because I enjoy. It's gratifying seeing someone thrive and grow because of something I taught them. Yeah, with no financial return. Mm. And I don't just say that. I really mean that. I I it's. 
I don't know. It's I enjoy giving yep. more than I enjoy getting. Yeah. Some people know this about me. Some people don't know this about me. And some people's perception about me may be different than what they're hearing and seeing right now. Yeah. Some people might think, you know, whatever they think. Oh, that was a big shot. <laughs> I'm not a big shot. I'm not even a shot. Okay. <laughs> Man, it's, it's, it's been a pleasure. Now, for those people who might be interested in getting in touch with you, like, how are you helping people grow? Like, if you, your, your pitch, <laughs> like, well, what are you doing to help people grow? Just have a conversation with no obligation. It's my favorite line I made. Okay. Yeah. Have a conversation with no obligation. Uh, because if you get it, then let's talk. But if you don't get it, I have a line that says, I say, the get us don't get the don't get us, and the don't get us don't get the get it's. Hmm. My favorite line. Because if somebody wants to reach out to me, if you guys are interested in joining this, being a part of this, hmm. I will let you know if this is for it's you good. or not. Yeah. Forget me or EXP. I'm talking about the industry. Yeah. I've told so many people, stick to your full-time job. Don't become a realtor. They're like, <laughs> why do you say that? I'm like, because what you're expecting and wanting and needing is not, this really. is not the business. Mm. If other brokers or brokerages or somebody else in school taught you differently or told you differently, they're, they're, they're not telling you the truth because yeah. I'm not an agent counter, nor do I want people to join just to like grow my group. What good is to have a hundred people or a million people that are not selling? No impact, yeah. Yeah. And here's the thing. If somebody doesn't have that ready, willing, able, that drive, they're not hungry, driven, and coachable, they don't belong with my organization because then they slow everybody else down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, misery love company. Correct. Yeah. So thank you, man. Thank you, Al. In that spirit, uh, what I'm uh, what I'm actually doing, actually, uh, over the last week, I started doing. There's something that I was teaching Facebook, Instagram ads with uh, a messenger bot conversation uh, conversion. So basically, you teaching you what ads to run and you know how to set it up, how to use the technology to pre-qualify your leads. Um, you know, those of you who have listened in, I appreciate you guys listening in or those of you who will listen to the recording later. If you're interested, reach out to me. I'm giving away my course, which I was selling over the last three years for six thousand dollars per person getting into the course. So for the first time, you're just giving away five people per week. You're going to give it, give it away to the reason why I'm doing it is because there's a lot of things that are changing, you know, with L, whatever you're doing, maybe you are, you know, a lot, direct person, right? But I'm sure you have a database that you can run ads on, right? So I would love to share it with your group uh, on what we do. I know Fadi Dabaja runs Facebook ads. I see his stuff a lot uh, uh, in your in your group. Uh, and and he's been doing it actually as long as I have, I mean, if not longer. But I have seen one of his ads running for years. And I'm sure he got a lot of, you know, built a lot of database. So anyone interested, you can put it in the comments of this video. Lead gen, I'll reach out to you, give you access to the course. And Al, again, it's been a pleasure, bro. Uh, I would love to, you know, collaborate in any way possible in the future. And it, it was it was amazing having you on the podcast. Absolutely. And for all of you guys that, sorry, Michigan State people, I'm yeah. sorry. I do apologize <laughs> about that. But I am a diehard, um, where is it? There we go. Diehard Lions fan. <laughs> we're going to the Super Bowl this year. And I will tell you, uh, there's my family in the background over there. Yeah. And before we end, uh, if you get an idea, it's the office, and that's what it's all about. So I appreciate the opportunity. I appreciate the uh, the show and uh, the collaboration. And just know it's all about you, not about me. That's yeah. the bottom line. Thank you, bro. It was, it was a pleasure having you.